Nobody knew when it would start again. The extraordinary beast go violent in her blood. Nobody knew the virtue of her need to shape her face to the giant in her brain. Certainly, friends were sympathetic, kind, gave her small handkerchiefs and showed her tricks, built her life to a sort of pickup sticks simplification, as if she were a child. Malleable, she wore her luster nails daily like a debutante and smoked, watching the fur her breath made as they joked, caught like a wind in the freedom of their sails, while always behind her face the giant's face struggled to break the matte mask of her skin, and turned about at last, be looking in, tranquility in to that imprisoned place. Strong for the dive, he dived one day at tea, the cakes like flowers, the cups dreamy with cream. He saw the window, a lake, and with a scream, nobody heard, shot by immediacy. He forced the contours of her features out her tea-time friends were statues. As she passed, pushed, but seemingly drawn toward the glass, her tea-time friends were blind. They did not see the violence of his struggle to get free. And deaf, and deaf, they did not hear his shout. The waters of his lake were sharp and cold, splashed and broke, triangular on the floor after the dive from his imagined shore, in a land where all the inhabitants are old.